take a fold over clutch and you're going to need a few items to be able to do this. So I've got some fabric here which is going to be my lining fabric. I've got three fabrics for the outside of my clutch. This one and this one are from a rainbow of stitches and I'll include the links for them below. And this one is a faux suede from the Cricut Faux Suede Sampler Pack. And this is the Rustic Sampler Pack and this faux suede is lovely to work with. I've got some fusible interfacing and this is a mid-weight one. And you're also going to need a zip. Now we're going to be using our Cricut Maker today. Now if you've only got an air you still can do this but you need to make sure that your fabric is stabilised before you cut it. And of course if you don't have a cutting machine you are able to do this using hand cutting. So here we are in design space. Now the great thing about something like this is you can make your own pattern. You don't have to follow a pattern because we're only working with rectangles. It's really easy to do and you can make this as big or as small or as complicated or as easy as you like. So I've got a rectangle here and I've sized it at 11.5 by 14. So this blue piece is going to be my back fabric and I'm just going to cut it out as one rectangle. Now I'm going to work from this rectangle so I'm going to duplicate it once to begin with and with my duplicate this is going to be my interfacing. So I'm going to change it to the colour red and then I want two of these because I'll need two lots of interfacing. So again, I'm just going to duplicate that and then I'm going to hide those. I don't need to do anything with them. Now again, I'm going to go in and I'm going to duplicate it and this is my lining. So again, I'm going to change the colour on it and I'm going to change it to lavender. And again, I need two of these so I'm simply going to duplicate it and then I'm going to hide it. So I've got my interfacing, I've got my lining, I've got my outside back fabric, and now I just need my front. So again, I'm going to duplicate it. However, with my front, I'm going to work it slightly differently. So I'm just going to hide my back fabric. So with my front, I actually want it to be a bit interesting. So I'm going to use a few different fabrics. So I've got some faux suede that I'm using and I've got my fabric from a rainbow of stitches, which I've shown you. And I'm actually going to add in a third fabric. And I think I'm going to do some faux suede again, just a different color. So I'm just going to come to shapes first of all, and I'm going to grab a square. And I'm just going to size it up so it sits on this bottom section. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight and I'm going to slice. And this will then slice out this bottom rectangle here. And I'm going to change the colour of this to a brown. So I know that it's my faux suede in the darker colour. So that then leaves me with the rest of the front of my fabric and I'm going to cut it diagonally in half. So I'm just going to grab a shape and I'm going to grab a triangle and I'm just going to manipulate my triangle so that it sits directly diagonally across this rectangle. Once I'm happy with that, I'm just going to highlight and I'm going to slice and I can then remove this. Now I can leave it like this, but actually you can see that I haven't quite cut it on the corners. So I'm just going to get rid of this and rid of this. And I'm then going to duplicate this piece. And I'm just going to come across and I'm first going to flip it horizontally. And then I'm going to flip it vertically and they will then sit on top of each other really nicely. All I'm then going to do is highlight and I'm just going to make sure that my sizes are correct. So my width is correct at 11.5 and my height should be 10 but I want to make it 10.5 just to allow for a little bit of seam allowance especially when we're sewing these two pieces together. 
All I'm going to do is then I'm just going to change the colour of each piece so that I know which piece of fabric it represents. And I can then bring back all my hidden layers. So you can see that I've then got my two lining pieces, I've got my two interface pieces and I've then got my front pieces and my back front piece as well. So we're then going to go to make it and you'll see it's telling us that we are going to need our 12 by 24 mats which are fine. I'm just going to spin around my two triangles so that they sit better on my mat and I'm going to use as little fabric as possible. We don't want to end up wasting lots of fabric. So we're just going to place those so that we get the maximum use out of our fabric. So with my back front fabric, we're cutting it out in cotton. We're going to cut one of our triangles out in cotton. We're going to cut one of our other triangles and our rectangle out in faux suede. And then for our interfacing, we're going to cut those out using the fusible interfacing setting. Because we're using fabric, we need to change our blade over. So we're just going to open up our clamp, remove our deep cut blade. We're going to place our rotary blade in the same way as always. So teeth to teeth, you want to make sure that your guard shield is facing outwards and we can then close up our blade clamp. So I've now cut out all my pieces, so I've got my back front fabric, I've got my two pieces of interfacing, I've got my two pieces of lining fabric and then I've got my three front pieces. So I've got my two faux suede and my fabric. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to attach all of these together. So I'm going to put front to front on my two triangles and I'm just going to sew all the way down the middle seam so they will then become one piece. I will then come in with my bottom piece of faux suede and I will again put it face to face and I will sew all along this seam and they will all then become one piece of front fabric. You can see that I've now sewn my front pieces together and I've also got my back piece. So I've got two lining pieces and I've got two fusible interfacing pieces. So I'm going to place my fusible interfacing shiny side onto the wrong side of my fabric. And I'm then going to go in with my easy press for about 15 seconds on each area just to secure my interfacing onto my lining fabric. So you can see we've got our front piece here and we've also got our lining and then I've got my zip as well. So I've got the front fabric of my clutch here and I've also got my zip and it's facing the wrong way round and I'm going to place it to the edge of my front fabric just like this and then I'm going to come in with my fused lining and I'm going to place that on top again face to face so fabric to fabric and we're going to sew along the zip line now we're going to need a zipper foot for our sewing machine so this is what my zipper foot looks like. Now each zipper foot will look slightly different depending on your machine. So it's worth going onto your machine website and finding the correct zipper foot. You can see that I've pinned my front piece, my zipper and my lining fabric. And you're going to line up your zipper foot to as close to the zip line as you can get very slowly going to sew all along that line. So you 
you can see our lining fabric and our front fabric and you can see our sew line. See that these are now on opposite sides of each other. They're going to sit like this. So I'm just going to go and do a quick press to make sure that this all sits nice and flush on the zip. So to do the other side, we've got our lining fabric, so we're going to place that face down and we're going to place the zip on top and then we've got our outside fabric and we're going to place that on top of our front fabric face down and then we're going to ping all along this side of the zip and again we're going to go in and we're going to stitch the exact same way we did. The only difference is we're going to move our zipper as we stitch and you just do that by lifting up the foot on your sewing machine. You don't want your zipper to get caught in between all of this. So you can see that we've now attached our zip, so I've got my two front pieces, so we're going to put those over on each other, and we've also got our two lining pieces, which are over on top of each other, and we're going to go round and sew. So we're going to sew over our zip, you want to make sure that your actual zipper is out the way, but you want to sew all the way down and around on your front side completely. And then with your lining, you're going to come down both sides and you're going to come into a few inches of the bottom, but you are going to leave a gap. And this is so that we can turn the whole thing round the right way. Once we've sewn up the edge, we're then going to start feeding our lining into our bag. And then you just want to take your time and make sure that it's sat in there nice and flush.